Don Pedro Paterno was the first Filipino during the late Spanish colonial period with the sheer audacity to declare equality, if not superiority, to the colonizers. Why? To express it in today's terms, because he can. He had the brains, the vast resources, the high style, and the social connections to pull off anything he wanted with great success. Born to great wealth in 1857, at a time when most Filipinos only had dried leaves and grasses, the young Pedro grew up a prince in a local version of a European palace, almost unreal in its opulence, Pedro completed degrees in theology and philosophy with honors at the Universidad de Salamanca. In 1880, he became a doctor of civil and canon law at the Universidad Central de Madrid. His social life revolved around the Madrid aristocracy. His good friends were Spanish aristocrats and officials. He married an aristocratic Spanish lady, Doña Luisa Piñero y Merino. Possessing great noblesse oblige, Paterno tirelessly promoted high Filipino culture and exquisite arts and crafts to European society out of his personal funds at his Calle Sauco, this is a residence. In 1880, he wrote and published Sampaguitas y Otras Poesias Varias, the first collection of Filipino poems in Spanish. In 1885, he also wrote and published Ninay, the first novel in Filipino. Like all ilustrados, he dreamt of a reformed, improved relationship between Madre España and Las Islas Filipinas, as visualized and idealized in Juan Luna's allegorical painting, España y Filipinas, which he commissioned from his compatriot. True, there were complex actuations, mostly political, that marked Pedro Paterno unfavorably for decades in the national psyche. Delving more into his silent, honorable deeds rather than his flamboyant actuations, we rediscover a Filipino Renaissance man worth national attention and historical reconsideration.